Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. In today's episode, we're going to be adding lots of details uh, to the scene. We will be adding lots of detailed castings, uh, vehicles, figures. For years, I have collected basically HO scale stuff. Um, as far back as high school, I remember going to garage sales and estate sales and buying boxes of HO scale stuff and just saving pieces like windows, doors, chimneys, any little pieces I could. Uh, so even buying complete structures off of eBay and then completely stripping them down if it was a, a plastic kit that I just was not interested in keeping. Um, stripping down all the doors and windows, any detailed parts that were on it, um, cutting them off and saving them. So uh, today I'll show you how I paint those and my techniques for placing them on the layout. So real quick, we'll go over to the workshop and I'll show you my collection of detail parts. So I like keeping everything in clear plastic containers. I don't label any of them because um, I can just see what's inside them. I'll show you up close uh, some of the containers. This container here is all castings from rustyrail.com you can see there are lots lots of castings um, this container is entirely stuff pertaining to the harbor scene and I showed this in a previous video where I just take one container and put stuff in it that is pertaining to the area that I'm working on. So I have a bunch of these um, rowboats that have to be put together. Um, some other little boats from Seaport Model Works. Um, I have some wood boats that have to be put together. Here you can see I've got a lot of vehicles. Um, a lot of white metal castings from railroadkits.com and also from best castings um, great detail parts uh, these are just a lot of plastic detail parts um, have quite a few different style forklifts animals um, a bunch of barrels uh, this is just a lot of large plastic um, pieces here we have a couple boxes <laughs> it's kind of a bad habit where I just throw detail parts um, into small boxes rather than putting them in a container like this where everything is organized I just throw them in here but a lot of this stuff too I use for uh, when I'm photographing my models here's a few different types of fences
more vehicles. There's a, a lot of figures. It's nice to keep it organized like this rather than just throwing everything in a box like this because uh, really it's hard to see what's in there. So I need to go through these two and um, separate everything and put it into the different uh, little compartments. Um, this here, a friend of mine, Mike, printed these on a 3D printer. And this is just incredible. Um, Mike asked me if I wanted some detail castings and I thought he would send me a box of just a, a few of each of the castings but he sent me all of these and it's incredible i don't know if you can see how deep this is but there are so many so many parts um these are all crates pot belly stoves um a lot of rectangle crates um, barrels more barrels these are all trash cans and then there's lids for the trash cans um, different size crates um, furniture there's dressers bathtubs um, bookcases more crates we have um, gas pumps we have soda machines uh, these two are both luggage and then a whole bunch of cinder block smaller uh, barrels and cans and then a lot of pallets so uh, that will last me that's enough to cover my entire layout just incredible and then this is just um, all different windows So, as you can see, um, there is enough to uh, cover my entire layout, really. And then I have a lot of parts up here, like this entire container is full of plastic detail parts. So I also will show you all of the um, detail parts I have on my pegboard. So you can see I have a lot more figures, um, some vehicles. The vehicles from Mini Metals uh, are really nice. Um, figures and vehicles are just so expensive but i guess that's just how it is <laughs> um i have some more jordan vehicles uh these are really nice so i've picked out a bunch of castings and i've actually uh, went ahead and put a primer some of them i have a black primer on that i did a long time ago and then just recently I did the uh, gray primer on these uh, there's quite a few castings here I have these divided in piles of 10 so we have 10 20 30 
40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110. I have a box that has 10 castings that are already painted. And there are some small cats and dogs in there. Uh, that puts us at 120. And then I've got four pelicans, a life ring. I've got 20 birds, pigeons. Uh, I've got three lamp posts that I have to paint. Uh, so, I don't know, we're at like 145, possibly 148 with the lamp posts. So, oh, it is a lot of casting. So, uh, I'm going to get busy painting these. So, I've got some of the crates done and the uh, lobster traps. And I'm just basically right now using these colors. So it's desert sand, antique gold, light buttermilk, light taupe, and burnt umber. And for the crates, um, we'll take some desert sand, put a little bit of the antique gold with it. And then just scrubbing over it, kind of just dry brushing. And then we'll throw in some light taupe. So we're not doing them all the same, we're just adding a little bit of each color every time we uh, paint one. And we'll do a little bit of burnt umber. Then after these dry, if we want, we can go back in and dry brush some highlights on it. So here we have a pile of a bunch of different sized crates. Okay, so I haven't done it all. I just went over and scrubbed over it. Now we'll add a, quite a bit of the antique gold and we'll just focus on some individual boxes. I think a good rule of thumb is to not go too dark with your castings. Um, if you make a crate, like you use straight uh, burnt umber on it, it's going to be pretty dark. And then when you place it on there, you might be able to see it in person, but definitely when you go to photograph it, it's just going to look like a dark area on the layout. And it's just not going to photograph well. So uh, try to keep your castings pretty light. Now you could, um, <laughs> I'll show you. Um, when I painted my boats, um, I put some tape sticky side up on just a square piece of styrofoam. And what you could do is stick a bunch of crates on here. Uh, we'll put a pallet on there, another crate. Then, it's a lot easier to paint. Whatever works easiest for you. I know a lot of people will paint their detail parts on a, on a cork. You can put a little piece of double-sided tape on there. Or, um, I forget what it's called. It's a little gummy stuff that you put on there. And then just stick that on the end. And... It works really, really great. Then, it doesn't take long for the acrylics to dry. Uh, you can take your light buttermilk and lightly go over it and put some highlights on it. 
And then real quick, if you want to, um, I'm gonna take black. And just, just to show you, you would probably want to do this after everything is done. Take a little bit of black. And let's see, let's take a, a really light crate uh, like this one here. And then all we're gonna do is put a wash over it. So you can see that wash gets into all of the cracks and brings out even more of the detail. So again, this step you would want to do last after you have it painted the way you want it and you dry brush your highlights, then put a black wash over it and it goes into all of the cracks. And you don't have to do this on every single piece, but just some random ones. Again, it helps give it a, uh, a variety because you definitely don't want them all to look the same. I wanted to quick show you, I took some different shaped pieces of wood and painted them tan and then dry brushed some of the off-white on it. And so it just looks like a pile of boxes. But it's actually just scrap wood from my uh, scrap wood box. And then what you can do is you can take some of your more detailed crates or boxes and glue them on top so always keep your little scrap pieces of wood you can make little boxes out of them I wanted to show you quick on pieces like this uh, this first had a black primer on it I then took um, burnt umber and dry brushed over the entire piece. Then I took the antique gold and I think I mixed it with desert sand. As you can see, I've just been mixing colors and then dry brushed that. So I'm treating the entire casting as one thing. Now, I will go in, uh, for instance, on top, there is like, looks like maybe a little milk jug or some type of can. Uh, let's just paint that an off-white color. Now it looks like there is a metal can in the middle, in the front. Let's take light avocado. Now we're dry brushing it. We're not painting it solid. We want some of the colors underneath, the blacks and the browns to, to show through. So it makes it look like an aged, rusted can. Okay, now there looks like there is a, a, a sack, two sacks in front of it. Um, this is called Sand Gray. We're just going to mix it with our tan and our browns. So we want it to look like maybe burlap. And then we can even just get our brush wet, drag some of that color over it. Creates kind of a wash. 
Okay, then just on the very top, the very top of those, we'll dry brush some off-white. I don't know if you'll be able to see this good. Okay, now on that green can, we can add some highlights to that. And we'll use, uh, it's a really light green, it's called sea glass. Just a little bit to give it some value. Okay, now on these two big barrels, they're silver bands. Okay, now <laughs> you do not have to try to paint these solid. If we just do a few lines It'll just represent that the entire thing is silver. Again, you don't have to paint it solid. If you try to paint it solid, you'll get it on the barrel and you'll get frustrated. So if you just get here and there, it'll look like the band is... Um, rusted a little bit and it's got some brown on it or dirt and then we'll just get the top of it right around the edge so i just painted silver bands on this and instead of trying to do a straight line I just kind of dabbed it on the band and then I also just did some dabbing of the silver on the red barrels then while we've got our silver out we can hit the edges of this green can here make it look like some paints chipping off of it that's what's great about painting a bunch of detail castings all at once. Uh, like I've got some silver on my brush so I can go and do touch up after things have dried. Um, if you have a rusted metal pipe. You know you can now, now that this is dry, you can dry brush some of that silver so that it looks like at one time this was a silver pipe and it's just completely rusting now. I love painting detail castings. It is, for me, it is so relaxing. I could spend the whole day painting these. Most of the time when I'm painting these, I'm in my shop and I've got music going and the time just flies by. You can completely lose track of time doing work like this. After these are done, I'll take some pastel chalks and add some rust and dirt to these. Now you can go as detailed as you want. Um, you can put oil streaks running down the side of the barrels. You could dry brush uh, a rust color around the bands and the edges. And then again, do the uh, pastel chalks on it. And if you're photographing your layout or diorama or models, um, you want to put in the time to make them look really good. Okay, next we're gonna put some silver. We're just gonna put some silver on some of it to make it look like the uh, paint is chipping off some of the barrels. And then after that dries, then we'll do our pastel chalks. So we're just hitting the edges, do a little more towards the bottom. Don't know if you can see that. Just want it to look like the uh, paint is chipping off the barrel. Okay, we've got our pastels. 
might be really hard to tell, but I'll show you. Okay, so I'm almost done. I've got a few more over here to um, paint. Um, but I'm going to start to put these in this little tray. And I don't know, this little tray was like little cookies were in it. Um, or little candies. But it's really nice because you can separate them. Uh, even like something like what Oreo cookies come in. There's a plastic tray that all the cookies are in. And um, you can just wash it out really good. And it's just a good way to transport all these parts over to the layout. And sort of keep them separated a little bit. So I just finished this piece and uh, I wanted to show it to you. I'm hoping you can see that good. Uh, my best advice when painting detail parts is to have three values on every item. So you have uh, the color of the item, say it's red like this barrel. Um, then you have a dark value that would be the shadows. And then you have a third value which would be your highlights. So you can see there's a radiator sitting there. So first I painted it black and then I dry brushed gray over it. So that's two values. You have the main color of the item, which is gray and black is your shadows. And then there's rust on it. And the rust is the third color on it. Okay, let's take them over to the layout and start to place them. Before we start adding our details to this, uh, I want to talk to you real quick about fixing or hiding small imperfections when building a, a layout or a diorama. Um, I feel like this is a huge part of model railroading. And I'll show you examples on here. Uh, when I put this deck in, I should have put some strip wood below it or little shims to raise it. Because as you can see, it's not level with the, the sidewalk or piece of cardboard that's here. So what I did was I took brown paint, I mixed it with gray, and painted the edge of the cardboard and then I also painted it up here um, the structure that sits here is not perfectly square so again I took some brown paint and did a wash around the edges so that when it sits on there you see that dark brown and you don't realize that it's not perfectly square. So a lot of the times when you're building scenes like this, you are having to um, hide little imperfections. And I think you have to do it constantly. At least I find myself having to um, fix uh, little mistakes here and there. So I just wanted to point that out, uh, that that's something that's very common when uh, building a layout or a diorama and you're doing scenery, um, you're constantly trying to find out or figure out how to um, fix uh, little imperfections or little mistakes. So I'll show you with the building here. When that sits on here, now it's hard to tell that the edge of that cardboard is there 
or that it's not perfectly square. Okay, we'll take this off for now. Well, maybe I'll leave it there and start to just place, see what it looks like. I'm going to start placing my details around it until I'm happy with it. And then I can start to glue them in place. As you can see, I still have to cut a section of railing away right there. So that walkway goes all the way through. Uh, but we'll do that later. Okay, so I've started placing detail parts around and I just kept moving them around until I was happy with it and let me talk a little bit about um, how I pick uh, certain parts and I I go mainly by color for instance this blue barrel right here the reason I chose that is because of the color now here is same barrel yellow with white well as you can see the building has a yellow tint to it it's kind of light so it would not stand out much where the blue up against that yellow really stands out same with the red barrel that sits here um, if that was tan or yellow it would blend in with the building or even blend in with the um, cement here. So you just want to have colors that contrast with each other. Now, once I get these glued in place, um, I will go in with pastel chalk. Obviously, there is a path where people would walk through, through here and around over here. So you would want to dirty that up because there's a lot of foot traffic going through there. And then with your castings, you want to per put dirt around them so that it looks like they've been there for a long time. And like these stilts that this large uh, barrel is on, is made of steel and I've painted it to look like rust well that rust would run down onto the concrete and stain the concrete a good trick too is to uh, where you have a barrel put some oil on the top of the barrel then have a little bit running down the side of the barrel and then have sort of a large puddle around the barrel on the cement. And then I have, I left this rope on purpose. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little stake in the ground and then wrap that around the stake so that it's just like that. Let me move this building quick. Um, the first thing we'll have to do is get this building glued in place. But I wanted to show you quick the yellow barrel that I showed. Um, when you put that yellow barrel, say up against this uh, blue building, it definitely pops out more. Now the crates that I'll put in here um, will be brown. I'll definitely wanna go with a, a darker brown. I have some that are lighter but as you can see it's too close to the shade of the cement and way too close to the shade of the building so by doing the uh, darker brown and i have a reddish brown it'll stand out and be more noticeable against the uh, the yellow of the building next we'll get our building glued in place and I wanted to point something out, and I don't know if anyone has noticed it, but I took the top half of this building off and rotated it. The word boats was on the other side. So very carefully, I just took that off 
and rotated it and glued it back on. Um, I just thought that this side looked more interesting and that's what most people are going to see. And I have a, uh, a view blocker in there so that you can't see all the way through the building. Okay, I have my building glued in place. Now, I'm just going to take some brown pastel chalk and outline this casting. I'll show you why in a second. Now, we'll take this out. And I don't know if you can see, but there's an outline of where that casting goes. Now, I'm just going to add some dirt. Right, uh, right inside of that outline. So we're creating a natural shadow, but also... If it doesn't sit perfectly flat, it won't be noticeable. Okay, now I'm just going to take some super glue. And when you put your glue on, make sure you go towards the back side of it on the bottom. Not towards the front, because you don't want that glue to ooze out and be visible. So always go towards the, the back edge of the uh, casting. Okay, there it is. Now, you can put more dirt around it. You just want to make it look like it's been there a while. I've talked about it before, but I think it's important to create little stories with the scenes. So by creating, putting dirt around it, um, it tells the viewer that all of this junk's kind of been sitting there for quite a while. Okay, next we're going to take some engine oil from AK. Now, really for this small of detail, you could take any dark brown or even a black acrylic paint. So we're going to put a little bit on top of this barrel. Then we're going to put a little streak on the side. And then we're going to put it around the edge on the cement around the barrel. We'll put some on top of the red barrel too. Maybe we'll do the same over here. Okay, now it really gives the illusion that there is some weight to this casting. Uh, that it's not just sort of floating there. You've created a shadow underneath it dirt around it and some oil spills uh, so it all looks more believable now we'll also take a uh, a rust color and there's a radiator sitting here that is rusty and we're just gonna Put that rust onto the cement. I can take the camera off quick and show you up close uh, what this looks like. Okay, let's get some more detail parts glued in place and then we can do some more weathering around them. After you get your castings in place, Glue some weeds around them. Okay, next we'll add some more um, oil drips. Since this is a boat repair shop, uh, it would end up looking pretty grimy and dirty. We'll just darken it up to around the um, trash cans and this empty oil can maybe it kind of leaked out
Okay, as always, uh, there's still a lot more to do, but I'll give you a close-up look so that you can see where we're at so far. You can see I'm starting to add some uh, junk down below. Even some little trash down here. We still have to put our stake in the ground and attach our rope to it. Um, I have to put some planks here to fill this area in. You can see some more trash down below. Lots of uh, lobster traps, pallets. I'll have more um, details to paint and put along here and then figures. I have a set of stairs to build that go down right here. It'll probably go down halfway to a platform and then the rest of the way down. Well, we are almost done with the harbor scene. Um, really, probably a couple more videos. Uh, I have a large boat to build from Seaport Model Works, and then a few small rowboats. Um, then it will be time to texture all of the water and get all of the piers permanently glued in place uh, and once all of the water is textured, then I have some walkways to build in between the piers. Uh, just some little planks. Um, nothing big, but I can't do that until everything is permanently glued in place. And then once that's done, uh, it will be time to move on. And I have been looking forward to this for so long. We will start to lay all of the track on this side of the layout. We'll get our track uh, painted, weathered, laid in place, uh, ballast, um, and we'll start running some trains. And then really, after that point, I think I would like to continue um, my bench work, possibly get all my bench work finished over on this side of the room and then uh, lay the track on the bench work after it's done. And then we have uh, more clouds to paint. So there are so many videos coming up. Uh, we'll have videos on painting and weathering track, laying track, electrical, uh, painting and weathering locomotives and rolling stock. Um, I will fully do 
um, some videos on painting the clouds over on this side. We have a subway to plan over on this side and then build it. There's going to be a large, very large city directly across from this. So uh, very exciting. Let me show you quick the track plan again. So this is the area that we're working in right now. And really, it's only four feet long and two feet deep. So as you can see, we have a lot more. Uh, this will be the very large city that I mentioned. And the city will continue and then it will go into industry along here. Now, along here, underneath, will be the subway. And then there will be stairs that go up to the top level, which is the city. So a lot to do. And we have a lot more uh, waterfront areas to complete. And we even have some water over here. So, and I am fully committed to making the entire layout as detailed as this area right here. So, there are times where I tell myself that, boy, that's good enough. Let's just move on. <laughs> and uh, that's a clear sign that I need to take a break. And so usually I just walk away for a while and when I come back, I'm re-energized and I'm back to working at 110%. So thank you all so much for watching and thanks for joining me on this great journey of building this layout. Um, I am just having the time of my life on it and I love sharing it with all of you. So. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy modeling everyone.